On day one, I spawned in as King Kong. Check me out, I'm the king of the world. But wait, why do I only have a few hearts? I'm a massive ape for crying out loud. That's when I realized I was on a playground. Looks like I'm not the king quite yet. From out of nowhere came a man wearing a black suit and tie. Oh, he must be super nice. We can always trust strangers in nice suits, right? Don't run, alien. You're coming with me. You're in trouble. Alien? Why is he calling me that? Just then, the man in black started to try and capture me. I'll never go with you. Kidnapping is wrong. I couldn't believe this guy. I had no choice but to run. Stop making a fuss and get into my unmarked vehicle. I have candy. The man in black was chasing after me and kept calling me an alien. What's this guy's deal? I ran into the forest and climbed up a big tree. Nice try, kidnapper. After resting for a bit in the tree, I jumped down to see if the man in black was gone. The coast was clear. Phew, I hope I never see that guy again. Just then, I heard some rustling. Was he back? Nope, it was a badger. Oh boy, I'm glad it's just you. There was a really weird dude chasing me earlier. The badger didn't want to chat. He was mad that I was on his turf and tried to attack me. Back off, badgie. I punched him and knocked him away. Huh, I'm not so weak after all. Nice try, punk. That badger had definitely learned his lesson. Or so I thought, because it wasn't long before I was surrounded by an entire badger gang. I'm having a really rough day. They had me surrounded. Suddenly, I felt something in my chest, and I let out a giant roar. The badgers jumped and ran off. I have no idea where that came from, but it worked. I'll have to remember that for the future. It was getting dark, so I climbed back up into a tree for the night to sleep in the branches. Wow, from up here, it's almost like I could touch the moon. It's huge. As I fell asleep, I couldn't help but wonder if I'd ever find a family out there so I wouldn't be so alone. On day two, I decided it was time to make my way in this world. I started to wander around and it led me to a jungle. Oh, this certainly feels like the place to make a home. I started to cut down wood and gather stone. I made my crafting table and got to work creating tools and a couple of weapons. Easy squeezy, weapon pleasey. I knew I was going to need a base very soon, so I started collecting resources for that too. But this was the jungle and it wasn't long before I was disturbed by a very grumpy venomous snake. I know how to handle this. I took a deep breath and roared and nothing happened. Uh-oh, maybe snakes don't have very good hearing. Oh well, I'll just have to take care of him the old-fashioned way. It was a good thing I had just made a sword, which I used to quickly take him out. Now that the snake was gone, it made me want to build a really well-hidden base. I didn't want the man in black to find me, or anything else for that matter. As I went deeper into the jungle, I soon saw a giant boulder. That rock would be a good foundation for my base. I got right to work constructing the beginnings of my jungle home. It was coming along nicely, but I soon got tired and needed to rest for the night. It was cozy in my small but sturdy base. I fell asleep thinking of plants to eventually construct my home into a jungle temple. On day three, I woke up bright and early to explore the jungle. Suddenly, I heard a squeak and saw a cute little green creature running away from a big crocodile. I followed them and saw the poor little green creature was cornered by the croc. Hey, stop right there, croc. How about you take a bite out of this? I started hitting him with my sword. He snapped at me, but I was able to dodge his blows. We brawled for a bit, but eventually, I was able to knock him out. I looked around for the little green guy and saw he was running away. Hey, I'm not mean, I promise. He didn't stop running, so I followed him. Don't be scared. Look, I've got a banana. Want one? The little green creature turned and stopped running. You're probably hungry. Here you go. He really liked it, and I think it helped him trust me. Mmm, like the Nana I do. Oh, he can talk. I asked him his name and where his home was. Luno, my name is. Lunarian, I am. On the moon, I live. But from the moon, I fell. Lost, I am. A lot of mean creatures here there are. But you? Nice you are. Alone, I am. I'm alone too. That's pretty cool you're from the moon though. I have no idea how to get you home, but I'm happy to try. The alien was relieved to hear I would try and help him. I invited him to stay at the base until we figured something out. He agreed and we went back together. On days four to five, I made it back to the base. We added another room so that Luno had a space of his own. Hmm, I'm going to need more materials to build some more of this temple. You stay here, Luno. I'll be back. I walked around the jungle and began mining and collecting all sorts of things from the temple. What was that? I thought I heard something. Guess not. I got back to collecting things. I heard some more rustling behind me and some malicious giggling. I turned and saw the group of badgers that had ganged up on me earlier. Oh brother, not you guys again. When are you going to just leave me alone already? I took in a big breath and gave my best banshee roar. Some of the badgers ran off, but some of them just stayed there. That's strange. Well now I wasn't defenseless like last time. I brandished my sword. I got this in the badger. I started swinging and hitting the badgers that had stuck around. I'll bet they wished they had run away. After I had gotten rid of all of the badgers, I noticed one of them had dropped something. It was an item that protected against sound attacks. Pretty clever badgers. Gotta hand it to them. I finished gathering materials and headed back to the base. I told Luna what had happened with the badger. Strong fighter you are. Ah, shucks, Luna. It was getting late and had been a long day, so we settled in for the night. Luna looked up at the moon before he fell asleep. He missed his home. It was close, yet so far. On day six to eight, I woke up ready to face the day. I wanted to find upgrades for the base, and Luna wanted to explore a little bit too. I told him to be careful and call out to me if anything happened. While I explored below some azalea trees, I noticed an entrance to a cave. I know what this means. Iron time. I hopped down into the cave. It was so lush down here. I got on my sword and quickly took care of the slimy pests. I found some really neat, dark colored cobblestone, plus plenty of iron. This cave rocked, pun intended. I couldn't wait to check out more, but it was then that I heard something from outside the cave. Huh, I better take a look. 
I carefully peeked out of the cave and saw the men in black running past. He was back. That was close. He could have seen me. What is he up to now? <clears throat> that was Luno's scream. I rushed out of the cave to find Luno. I no longer cared about my safety. I couldn't let the man in black kidnap him. This is terrible. I should have never let Luno go off alone. I wasn't going down without a fight. Feel my wrath, kidnapper. I went to knock his blocks off, but before I could get over there, he suddenly evaporated into particles. What kind of kidnapper magic was this? I was left alone with only my regrets to keep me company. What was I to do? On days 9 to 10, I was so discouraged. The man in black was too cunning. There was no chance I'd be able to save Luno. I didn't even know where he was taken. Maybe a walk will clear my head. I wandered around the jungle and through the forest. Eventually, I ended up in a familiar spot. It was the playground I started off at. I climbed back onto the small skyscraper. There was something comforting about being on top of it. I'm supposed to be King Kong, king of the jungle, but I couldn't even save my friend. Sitting on the skyscraper gave me an idea though. I know, I can build a statue to help take my mind off of things. So I went back towards my base. I stopped at an area that was nearby, but not so close that it would give my base away. I started clearing the area for my big project. Once I was done clearing the area, I started the foundation of the skyscraper. Not too shabby. It was a great start, but that would be enough for now. It was about to get dark and mobs would be spawning. I headed back to the base and crafted some gear with iron to pass the time. I hoped Luna was okay. After a while, I decided to call it a night and got some sleep. On days 11 to 12, I got up bright and early. I was looking forward to building my statue, but I was going to need a ton of materials to build my skyscraper. I headed out of the jungle and into a bamboo forest. As I was exploring, I noticed a large building hiding among the plants. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. There was an old spooky looking mansion. I was so intrigued by it. I went inside and had a look around. I wonder who used to own this place. Maybe it was an explorer. I was taking a closer look at things when I was startled by the sound of someone clearing their throat. <clears> throat> I turned and there was an old man looking at me. Hello there. May I help you, old chap? Sorry, I didn't think anyone lived here anymore. Indeed I do. This old house isn't what she used to be, but I'm too old these days to keep up with the yard. Oh, well, I like the way it looks. It's very earthy. And you have some really cool artifacts here. What a collection. Thank you, dear boy, but these relics are all fake. You see, I'm an explorer. Or I was when I was a bit more spry. Ho <laughs> ho. When I would find something fascinating, whether it was an animal, artifact, or relic, I didn't want to take it. No, I wanted others to enjoy finding it too so I would come home and recreate it. That way, the original would be right where it should be. It's very honorable of you. I have mad respect for your respect. Cheers. You know, you remind me of someone I met before. This might fascinate you if you'd like to see it. He led me into his backyard, and there in the middle was a model of a giant King Kong-looking gorilla. I found this gigantic creature on an island where it was worshipped as a god. I was so amazed, I went home and built this replica here. It's my most treasured discovery, and I've always hoped I'd meet another, as I've heard this creature is no longer living. I could tell he was thinking I was just like this great specimen. This is inspiring to see, but I'm much too small. I'll never reach that size. This ape started out as a small bugger, just like you. Day by day, he grew stronger and bigger until he was a towering, fearsome giant. Maybe you too will steadily grow so big. I wasn't so sure about that. I mean, I hope so, but I failed to save my friend. It was hard to believe I was destined for greatness. I said cheerio to the old explorer. I was glad I had met him. Then I continued collecting materials while also heading back towards home. While I was mining, I couldn't help but daydream about one day being a real king of the jungle. On days 13 to 15, I was making my way back to my base when I got the feeling I was being followed. I picked up my pace, hoping that would help, but I still couldn't shake that feeling. When I looked behind me, I finally caught a glimpse of something. Nope, I wasn't going to wait around to find out what it was. I booked it. I ran as fast as I could, but I was right. Something was following me, and that something was just as fast as I was. It was a tiger. It looks like I have no choice. I flipped around and faced him. No more running. I would just have to give it my all. Chew on this, tiger. I used my strength, my roar, and my sword. I gave it my all. He hit me a few times, there was no denying that this kitty was tough. This battle is intense. Even though it was a hard battle, I actually was holding my own. Whoa! All of a sudden, we both went tumbling off a cliff. But did that stop us? No! We landed in the water and kept at it. There was a fire that got ignited in me. Something instinctual. Something primal. I let out a huge roar. We kept brawling, but in the end, I got the last blow and he was done. He came out victorious. Yes! I was so proud of myself. I could really step up to the plate when the odds are stacked against me and come out on top. I felt strength welling up inside of me, and I instantly evolved into a bigger version of King Kong. Okay, I wasn't quite the size of a jungle king, but I'd say I was at least a prince. Just call me Prince Kong. Prince Pong. Pong. Yeah, maybe I'll just stick to being called Zozo for now. On day 16 to 19, I was feeling so confident that I had some pep in my step. Maybe things weren't so hopeless with helping Luna. I had figured out how to defeat the tiger. Maybe, just maybe, I could figure out how to rescue Luna. I decided to return to the place of the kidnapping to see if I could find any clues. Bingo! And Sloppy was his name-o. There it was, a map on the ground. Looked like he dropped it in the chase. His mistake was my advantage. I looked it over and saw that it had a building on it, labeled Men in Black Secret Lab. 
These dudes really need to do some training on how to not compromise classified information. What a bunch of rookies. The map changed everything. This meant I had a shot at finding Luno, and this time, I was going to save him. But first, I better get ready for battle. I wanted to upgrade my gear, so I went back to the lush cave and mined a bunch more iron. Some spiders crawled up and tried to bother me, but I showed them who was boss real quick. Mind your business, spiders. Get it? The spiders weren't amused. Oh well, you go squish now. I was on a mission. I would not be deterred. Once I gathered enough, I went back to my base and got to work, crafting a full set of heavy-duty iron armor and iron weapons. Now, I was ready. I hoped. On day 20 to 22, I set off, following the map to the secret lab that was no longer a secret. Seriously, can you believe they just dropped that really important map? <laughs> I approached the area where the place was supposed to be, but I didn't see anything anywhere at first. But then I spotted it. It was a very well-hidden bunker lab. Without the map, I'd have never noticed it. I guess I can give them a little credit for camouflaging. Just then, some guards came out of the bunker. I quickly ducked out of sight. Yeah, that little green alien is really adorable. It's too bad he won't be around after today. I was just getting used to having the little guy around. I think, I think I'm gonna cry. Pull yourself together, Fred. Hey, I have feelings too. I'm sorry, Fred. I know what this is really about. It's about the last bagel that Jerry took. He already had one bagel. Who does that? A monster, that's who. <laughs> Let it out, buddy. Have a good cry. Talk about drama. I had to get in the door. Just then, two more guards came out to talk to the other ones. The door was ajar. This was my chance to sneak past the guards while they sorted out their feelings or whatever that was about. Okay, I'm in. That wasn't so hard. Just gotta find out where they're holding Luno, kick booty, and get out. No biggie. I turned a corner and found myself in a cafeteria full of guards. Uh-oh, wrong turn. Everyone turned and looked at me. Ah, so how about them burgers, huh? Talk about beefy. Well, I'll see myself out. Intruder, get that gorilla! That was my cue to run. I ran deeper into the base. They were so shocked to see a big gorilla, they weren't ready to fight. I took them out with just a few big punches. Ooh, one of them dropped a key. I know what to do with that. I put the key in the lock of the door they were guarding. Open sesame. Luno was inside the room. Zozo. He was so excited to see me. He was surprised how much I had grown. I told him I was sorry for taking so long to rescue him. He was just happy to see me and told me I was very brave. What a guy. No time to lose, Luno. We gotta break you out of here. The battle is only half won. We tried to hurry and make our way out without running into anyone else, but of course that was too good to be true. The man in black cut us off and blocked us from getting any further. I'm not the bad guy here. This is what needs to happen. Surrender or I will have to use this. He flashed a fancy looking gun. The gun didn't shoot bullets. Instead, it produced a terrible debilitating sound. I quickly equipped my noise canceling ear protection that I picked up from the badgers. But poor Luno was spinning with confusion. No one was going to hurt my friend friend on my watch, I charged the man of black. I gave him a super punch and knocked him to the ground. He didn't get back up. He was out cold. Total knockout. You didn't stand a chance against these guns. Luno was still a bit disoriented, but he was okay. We rushed out of the lab and into the wilderness. The man in black never knew what hit him. On day 23 to 26, we returned to the jungle temple. I kept apologizing that I hadn't been able to stop the men in black from taking him, but he told me he didn't care, that it wasn't my fault. Blame yourself for other actions. Do not. I guess he had a good point. I tried my best, and sometimes bad things just happen. So, are you okay after being captured? Heavy is my heart. Homesick. I wish I could help. If only I could reach the moon. Wait a minute. I'm building a skyscraper sculpture. What if I build it so tall that it can reach the moon? Wow. Great idea that is. Great friend Zozo is. We ran over to the sculpture and continued building together. Phew, this was a huge undertaking. We definitely were going to need way more materials than we had in our stash. We would go find more supplies tomorrow. That night, as we both sat and looked up at the stars, we saw an interesting huh? constellation. Does that make you think of anything? On days 27 to 31, I spotted a wandering trader walking by with his llama. I ran out and flagged him down. Good morning. Can I see what you're selling? I am in need of a lot of andesite. Is that so? I don't have a lot on me right now, but I'm on my way to a quarry that has tons of stuff. I often go there to ply my wares. A huge source of materials that I can use for the skyscraper? What good luck. Thanks for that info. I'll certainly be taking a visit there. I got other stuff, though, if you want to make a trade. I don't have any money. That's okay. You can buy on credit and I will come collect later. It's the newest craze. Buy now. Figure it out later. That sounded good to me. I looked at his wares and saw an enchanted iron chest plate and a better helmet. I selected these items and then bid goodbye to the trader. I'd have to remember to come up with some money later. I went over to where Luna was and let him know I needed to make a journey to the quarry. I told him to wait at the base and make himself at home. I'd be back as soon as I could. Eat all the frogs and bananas you want while I'm gone. I headed out and eventually found myself wandering through the savannah. At one point, I started hearing some weird laughing around me. Back up, buddies. Trust me, you don't want a piece of me. But they clearly did want a piece of me. They didn't waste time in jumping all over me. There were so many of them and they were fighting like there was no tomorrow. I was able to take quite a few of them out, but with so many around 
around me, they definitely got a few good hits in. My sword proved to be strong too, but I had to give these guys some credit. They may have been smaller than me, but they really fought with a lot of heart. Unfortunately for them, it was me who ended up taking all of their hearts. Eventually, they were nothing but dust. Look who's laughing now. Actually, I feel a little bad for taking them all out, but fish gotta swim and Zilzo's gotta survive. On days 32 to 35, I spotted the quarry in the distance on a mountain. As it got closer, I noticed it was pretty quiet. I didn't see any activity. Where is everybody? I poked around the quarry, searching for someone. Anyone. Finally, I came across an office. I walked in and saw a foreman sitting alone. Well, how do you like that? It's one of them big gorillas. I'll be mine. Never seen one of your types around these parts. I came here to get some skyscraper materials. Where is everybody? Shoot, you're out of luck, big feller. This here quarry had done shut down. Yes, sirree. Why, this quarry used to be a real resource hoedown. But we had to shut things down because of that gosh darn monster. Monster? As sure as I'm standing right in front of you. There's a terrible lizard creature snatching up my workers. No one dares work here anymore. It was an HR nightmare. And if I ain't got laborers, then I can't get no resources to sell. Well, if I take care of that monster for you, would they work for you again? I reckon that'd do it. Looks like I had my next mission. Slay the lizard, get the quarry back into working order, get boatload of materials. I started searching around for the monster lizard creature. I jumped down the mountain and eventually noticed a cave opening. That seemed like a good place for a monster to hide. I crawled around the cave, following its twists and turns. Eventually, the cave opened up and there laid a giant Komodo dragon. It was snoozing. I cleared my throat. Hey, um, I'm Zozo. I was just popping in to ask that you don't kill any more of the workers at the quarry because it's really bumming everyone out and the dragon jumped at me and snapped. Whoa, whoa, I'm sure we can talk this through. Nobody has to get hurt. The dragon was not interested in negotiations. I had no choice. I had to fight back. This dragon had a mighty bite. I was striking the lizard whenever I could and dealing some major blows. But this lizard wasn't going down easy. There was a reason it had become king of the quarry. Komodo dragons had a terribly venomous bite. Thankfully, I had upgraded my armor. Otherwise, I might have fallen prey to this clever lizard's venom. The dragon chased me all around, but I could tell it was losing hearts. Fast. It doesn't have to be like this. You can go find another place to live. Don't make me do this. These workers just want to make a living. You don't need to keep eating them. The lizard would not listen to reason. Can't say I didn't try. With my sword drawn, I dealt the final blow. I vanquished the dragon. Ooh, and it dropped a pendant. Most importantly, I can get this quarry up and running again and get Luno back to the moon. I looked around the Komodo dragon's nest for a second to see if there was anything of interest. I didn't see anything, but then I heard a little voice. Mama? Oh, she was a girl dragon with a baby. My bad. This poor baby was without a mother and it was my fault. I felt terrible. Hey there, baby dragon. I'm not gonna hurt you. I hope you can forgive me about your mom. She wasn't my real mom. She was a really mean stepmom. Honestly, you did me a favor. Whew, that was a relief to hear. Imagine if they had gotten along. This would have been super awkward. I told the baby that she was welcome to be my friend and to let me know if there's anything I could do for her. Then I headed out of the cave and back to the office. The baby followed at a distance. On day 36 to 39, I told the foreman that the monster had been taken care of and that the workers could come back now. Yeah, well ain't that just a kick in the pants. That's mighty grand. There's just one teensy weensy problem. Another problem? You see, my workers ain't around no more. With no work here, they are fixing to make a new quarry of their own over yonder. But word is, that dog won't hunt. They strapped in the middle of a newly formed lake after a big flood in that there area. <sighs> All right, point me in the direction and I'll see what I can do. Go that way. I stepped outside the office and saw the little dragon poke his head out from a nearby mine. I felt so bad. She didn't have anyone to care for her now. So I told her she could come with me. I hope this wasn't a fool's errand. Eventually, we came upon the lake and sure enough, just as the foreman said, out in the middle was an island with some small houses. I crafted a boat. We sat out up across the water and soon reached the other side. Once we got on the shore, the quarry workers came out to greet us. Are you the rescue team? We have been waiting so long. Monster! Kill our monster! Oh no, I should have realized the baby would trigger these workers. No, 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 I took care of the monster for you. This is just a cute, harmless baby. There's no need to be alarmed. I am here to rescue you and take you back to the quarry. As I said, there's no dangerous monster anymore. You now have a safe work environment. So what do you say? Want to get out of here? The workers cheered. They were tired of being on the tiny island. I offered them my boat, but they said it wouldn't be possible because they needed to take all their equipment with them. That was quite the conundrum, but that's what I was here for, to fix all the problems. I sailed back across the lake and started chopping down a bunch of trees. Eventually, I had enough to construct a simple bridge. Before going back to the island, I found a cave and collected some cobblestone. After grabbing some of that, I decided it was a good idea for me and the baby to take a nap. We had had a really long day and would need the energy. On days 40 to 43, I started to construct the bridge out of wood and stone to get across the lake. Halfway through making the bridge, though, I hit a problem. More like a problem tried to hit me. There was a shark in the water. Huh, I should be able to give this guy a nice big conk on the head. I reached down to hit the shark, but it bit me. I kept struggling to climb out of the water. I saw the shark coming for me. I'm done for. But just as it reached me, the baby Komodo swiped its tail, smacking it hard in the face. The shark turned its attention onto the baby, and she snapped her venomous mouth at the shark. It didn't stand a chance after that. Thank you for saving my life, little one. And I'm still sorry about your stepmom. She really didn't seem upset by it. By the way, do you have a name? It's Bubblegum. Nice. That's a cute name. I finished the bridge and made it back over to the workers. Thanks, Mr. Zozo. We'll start heading back to the quarry with all our stuff. That was good to hear. I hadn't
expected so many bumps in the road, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. Bubblegum and I got back to the quarry before the workers did, so I went to the office and let the foreman know the good news. He was so giddy that he was hooting and hollering. We'll be up and running lickety split. You'll be the first one to get what you need, and we'll give it to you on the house for all your troubles. Sounded fair to me. I thanked him, and he let me know it'd be ready soon enough. On days 44 to 49, I returned back to my base with Bubblegum by my side. I told Luna about the drama and introduced Bubblegum. Then I noticed that the wandering trader was still hanging around. Hey, it took a bit of trouble, but I got things at the quarry back in order. They'll be starting production immediately. He was so happy to hear that. His line of work was no longer compromised. You know, I have a network of other traders who could help bring the other materials over. That way you can get your stuff quicker. What do you say? Sure, that would be great. Just let me know the cost. Just put it on the credit. Okay, I sure hoped I wouldn't live to regret that. Oh well. I noticed that Luna and Bubblegum were getting along really well. Hey Luna, I was thinking that Bubblegum could stay at our base. Are you okay with that? Luna loved the idea, so I started cutting out a spot to make room for Bubblegum to enjoy. Then it was time for some much needed sleep. On days 50 to 53, the first load finally arrived from the quarry. You people sure work quick. Talk about a speedy delivery. We upgraded you to Wandering Trader Prime. What's that going to cost me? Don't worry about it. We'll just put it on your credit. Okie dokie. I realized I was going to need somewhere to store all these materials. That was no problem. I built more of the skyscraper, but unfortunately, I realized the next hurdle. Glass. I needed a lot of glass. This project was surely exhausting. I know what will help me figure out my problem. Sleep. In the morning, I spoke with the traveling trader and asked if he had any connections to some serious glass stash. You know, I do actually know of a glass factory. Although it's some distance away. Well, sounds like I'm due for another adventure. I'll set out now. I felt better leaving Luna alone, now that Bubblegum was there to keep him company. I traveled through a few different biomes, and eventually wound up at the glass factory. It felt like deja vu. I had a sneaking suspicion that this place was not in working order, just like the quarry. I entered the factory and saw that it was staffed by piglins. You there. We have lost enough. Just leave us in peace. I'm not here to cause you any trouble. I'm here to purchase some glass. Is there a problem with the factory? Oh, there's a problem, all right. We've been overtaken by raiders. They told us they won't let us do any more mining for coal unless we pay them for access. But we're just piglins. How in the world are we to pay them? That stinks. I'm sorry, but I had Brussels sprouts for lunch. It makes me gassy. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Well, anyway, let me know how to help you. I'm pretty good these days at roughing up bad guys. Let me go have a chat with them. The piglins were excited to hear it and pointed me in the direction of the raiders. I was happy to get going because there was a really stinky smell around that piglin. I went in the direction they pointed me to and saw the mine was full of raiders. I'm ready to raid the raiders who raided the mine. No more Mr. Nice Kong. These dudes were slowing down my skyscraper production, not to mention being jerks to the piglins. I charged into the mine, muscles ablazing. I was tired of all this drama. I had a moon to get to. I didn't have patience for these punks. It's chopping time. They didn't know what hit them. I swung my sword and took out a bunch of them with ease. That's what I'm talking about. I got lower into the mines and saw diamonds all over the place. Sweet sparkles. Don't mind if I do. Is that pun getting old? Eh, I don't care. I'm just going to keep saying it. I quickly mined a bunch of diamonds and then went back to kicking some mob bum. There were a lot of them, so they got a few hits in, but these guys were like pesky fleas. Annoying, but no match for what I'd been through. Sadly, my armor was getting pretty damaged. Once at the bottom, a vindicator with hoarding the stash. So, you've been keeping the piglins out of the mine so you can have all the diamonds to yourselves. Diamonds may last forever, but your reign of terror is over. But then it came at me hard. Now I was starting to get nervous. My hearts were starting to go down. Then I got a weird idea. The vindicator was instantly drawn to it, as if he forgot all about the fight. If it fits, I see The vindicator captain was trapped. Oh, I can't believe that worked. I jumped down and landed endless blows to vindicator. If you sits, I chop you to bits. Finally, the vindicator was no more, and I was left the champion in the room of diamonds. I looked around the room some more and also found some chests full of gold. I can pay back the traders with this. I really had come a long way since my time on that playground. On days 58 to 62, I woke up and took a bunch of coal and diamonds and went back to the glass factory. I walked in and they all squealed with delight that I wasn't dead. Praise coal, you weren't overtaken. Does this mean you won or did you flee? I'll let all this coal do the talking. I showed them some coal. You got coal, but coal can't talk, you know. You are very strong, but you seem to have knocked a few marbles loose up in that noggin of yours. I know, it's just a saying. Oh, never mind. Anyways, yeah, I got rid of all the raiders. Now you can go and get everything you need. Huzzah! Now we can mine our business for free. About that. You said you didn't have a way to pay the raiders, but why didn't you use the diamonds to pay them? Piglins seemed confused. They had no clue what I was talking about. Oh, you mean these shiny rocks? Bless your heart. Those silly rocks are utterly useless. Huh? Yes, too hard to even craft or melt down into anything. Again, I think you might need to see a doctor soon about that head of yours. Oh, brother. I'll just let them think what they want. They weren't the brightest bunch, but they knew how to make some good quality glass. That's all I needed them to know about. So, should I be able to get regular deliveries of glass soon? Piglins let me know that they would make sure I was their priority for sending glass to. And as a gift for helping them out, they gave me a furnace sword. It showed how much they valued coal over diamond. This sword was so cool. I thanked them for the great treasures I now possessed. I couldn't wait to show my friends what I had found. On day 63 to 66, 
1986, I returned back home to my base. I had glass from the factory, and now I'd get regular deliveries coming from the depot very soon. I was very excited about how things were looking up. I told my friends all about my adventures fighting the den of dangerous raiders at the mine. They were both so impressed and excited to hear about it. And then I said, if you sit, you be chopped to bits. Huh, nice one, Zozo. Hmm, yes, that did you still have. I decided to craft diamond armor for each of us. Once I had the armor finished, I walked out and found the wandering trader. I was excited to fix my credit score with him. Hey, I'm ready to settle my debt. He couldn't believe I had enough to pay him. I gave him a giant amount of gold, and he was super happy about it. Finally, my wife won't be so mad at me anymore for not getting paid for my labors all the time. With the stash of new materials I had acquired, I began to add more to the skyscraper. You know, some windows, some walls, that kind of thing. This bad boy was getting some good height to it. Muno came and admired the work I had done. He said he was lucky to have a friend that cared so much about getting him home. I knew he would do the same for me. I also know he would like and comment on my YouTube videos, and you should too. On days 67 to 70, I was on top of my skyscraper when Luno pointed to something in the sky a good distance away. What could that be? Oh, I think it's a bird. Wait, no, it's a plane. No. It's the man in black! Oh no, he had found us! It'd be pretty hard not to see, I guess. I'm sure you could see it from miles away. The man in black was traveling via jetpack through the sky. I'm sorry, but that alien must come with me. Give him up or I'll have to take him by force. His name is Luno, and he is staying. Don't make me beat you up again. I would like to see you try. I jumped at him, but he flew off the skyscraper. Ugh, get over here and fight me like a man! He zoomed around me. Every time he got close, I would swat at him, but he was always just out of reach. I was running all around the skyscraper top. Then the man in black dive-bombed me. Dude, I almost fell off! He dived on me again and I slapped him away. The next time, the man in black didn't come at me. He made a beeline for Luno instead. Luno was about to be taken. Luno! Luno held his little green hand up towards the man in black and the man in black stopped moving in midair. The little alien had mind powers. Luno, you never told me you had special powers. On the moon, they are not so special. You're on this planet, we consider that a superpower. Now hold him right there, Luno. I'll finish him off. I punched the man in black's jetpack enough times that it malfunctioned and he went plummeting to the ground. Look, he's falling with style. We sure make a good team, Luno. Thank you, friend. A great warrior you are. A good heart you have. A secret, I must tell you. Fell from the moon? I did not. Come here to seek help? I did. Being killed by a moon monster, my people are. In need, we are, for a champion. Told you I should have. Worried I was that you would not accept the challenge. But now, I know you are the most brave hero. Sorry I am for not being up front. Don't be sorry. I would be happy to help once we reach the moon. Thank you for being honest. Our conversation was interrupted by screaming from down below. What happened to the MIB? we should see? Hmm? On days 71 to 74, Luno and I got to the bottom of the skyscraper only to discover that the man in black was still alive. I felt kind of bad for him. Well, I felt bad until I saw he had bubblegum on a leash. The man in black managed to get his jetpack working and took off with bubblegum, leaving us shocked at the turn of events. This guy is the worst. I can't believe he survived that fall. And now he has sweet baby bubblegum. Luno and I were so sad. Why would he take her? It just didn't make sense. Did he think she was an alien? What did he want with her? I spotted something on the ground. Maybe it was part of the jetpack. It was a strange material. I didn't didn't recognize it. You okay there, Zozo? Sounded like there was a big fight happening. A piglin delivery guy stopped over to check on us. Ah, oh, yeah, there's this jerk who's been trying to capture us, and he took off with our friend. He dropped this. I've seen that material before. It was over in Stony Peak Mountain. Yep, definitely seen that stuff but I don't know what it is. It wasn't much to go on, but it was all I had, and decided to follow the clue. On day 75 to 78, I hurried and made it to the Stony Peak Mountains. It was beautiful up here. Lots of stony peaks. Imagine that. Atop the peaks, I noticed something that actually wasn't a peak. It was an observatory. Right on, that's gotta be what I'm looking for. I knew it wouldn't be a walk in the park getting up the mountain, and I was right. Mobs, mobs, mobs. Say hello to my little friend. I used my new furnace sword. I was on fire. I kept swinging and swinging, hitting them as hard as I could. Eventually, I made it out on top to the top of the mountain. The fun had just begun. I was at the observatory door, facing two robot guards. I don't suppose you'd just let me pass. Turn back. You are not permitted to enter. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I came this far, so either you're gonna let me through, or I'm gonna rip your arms out of your metal sockets. Hostile enemy detected. Annihilate. Looks like it'll be the hard way. I dodged their weapons and got a hold of them and let it rip. It didn't take too much to disassemble these dudes. I kicked open the doors and went ape crazy. I really tore it up in the place. There were plenty more robots as I searched the many hallways, and sure, they dealt me some damage, but I managed to obliterate them. You won't be back. I fought my way to the basement, but there was no sign of bubblegum. I couldn't help but wonder if I had come here for nothing. What if my friend wasn't here? No, I had to stop that kind of talk. I still had to search to the top. On days 79 to 84, I headed for the top of the observatory. And what do you suppose? That smug man in black was waiting for me at the top. Bubblegum was in a cage next to him. Well, 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 if it isn't the man in splat. Get it? Because we tossed you off a skyscraper? I noticed there was a giant telescope pointed at the moon. Didn't anyone tell you it was rude to spy on people? You don't know anything about me or this operation. I demand that you bring me the little green alien. I will trade you for 
your non-alien friend here. Let me think about that. Hmm, no. But you will give me back my Komodo dragon and leave us alone forever. And if not, well, then this conversation has got me really fired up. Let's rumble. We went head to head. This guy had all sorts of techie weapons. He knew he had to up his game against me. Clearly, he had expected this fight. We aimed, we hit, we blocked, we jumped. Why do you even want the alien? Just so you can torture him in your stupid little lab with your emotionally distraught guards? Yeah, that's right. I know all about your bagel incident. I won't let you hurt my friend. Ugh, Fred. I'm so firing him when I get back. Listen, we aren't going to torture the aliens. I'm trying to protect it from violent animals, huh? like you. And yes, we will study it a little, but nothing harmful. I saw that alien come down from the moon in my telescope. I've been searching for him ever since, and then you butted in. We continue to fight, but I slowed down a bit. Oh, hold on. We both want to help Luna. That's the alien's name, by the way. You'd know that if you were friendly for once, instead of using force to get the alien. He needs help. There's a moon monster destroying their lives, and I'm going to help stop it. We stopped fighting. That explains a lot of what I'm seeing in my telescope. I think I had the wrong idea about you, and I think you had the wrong idea about me. I'm sorry. I see now that you were looking out for the aliens, Luno's best interest. Maybe we better stop fighting each other and team up instead. What do you say? Well, as much as I was looking forward to kicking your butt King Kong style, I guess we can let it be. Now, can you let my baby friend go, please? Yeah, sorry. We thought she was an alien, too. You really need to get out more. So, what was your plan to save the Lunarians? Building that skyscraper to touch the moon. Then, I'll go to the moon and face the monster. We got bubblegum out, and the man in black told me to return to the base, and that he would be there soon. First, he needed some time to work on a tech weapon and started the trek home with bubblegum. A jetpack would have been handy, but oh well, walking was fine. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back to the temple with the baby in tow. Luno greeted us excitedly. He couldn't believe I had found bubblegum. Nothing there is that you can't do. A hero you are. I was excited to tell Luno all about the encounter with the man in black. I explained that he wasn't going to be a threat any longer, but in fact, he was going to help. Luno and bubblegum went inside to catch up. I was lucky to have found those two. I didn't have a family, and if I really was a King Kong, it sounded like I was the only one. Family comes in many forms. There's the family you're born into, and the family you make along the way. A wandering trader interrupted my monologuing. I've been watching you. I'm moved by how much you care for your friends. It reminds me of our good friend Johnny. Rip. He was always sticking his neck out for me and saving me from things. In his honor, I'd like to give you an upgrade. Free of charge. This will make you even stronger, if you can imagine that. I thanked him profusely. What a nice guy. I climbed up into the temple and realized I hadn't had much time for renovating the temple. I wanted it to look impressive for the man in black. I added upgrades and a lab area for the man in black, in case he needed it. It took a lot of hard work, but after a while, I was able to get everything completed. That's when I heard some shouting. Oh, what now? It was a piglin and a delivery person. They weren't in any trouble. Quite the opposite. They were excitedly letting me know that the deliveries were complete. Oh, thank you for your hard work. On day 90 to 94, I crafted the enchantment materials the trader had given me. I was able to fully enchant all my armor and gear. I was super excited about that. This armor is perfect. I was ready to finish the work on the skyscraper. I buzzed around, building it taller and taller and taller and taller. This skyscraper was truly a ridiculous height now, and it was practically out of the Earth's atmosphere. I steadily climbed to the very top of the skyscraper to see how much closer I needed to be to the moon. I realized I was having a hard time breathing. There wasn't much oxygen up here. I guess I hadn't thought about that. This could be my undoing. Just then, as if he had planned it this way, the man in black appeared beside me. Nice work on the skyscraper. Scraper, Zozo. It's looking pretty stellar. That's a word kids still use nowadays, right? At any rate, I made you the spacesuit to help you breathe out here. Wow, I was really glad he and I were on the same team. I thanked him, and then he also gave me an item that would make me super strong. Wait to use it until you're on the moon. With the change in gravity, it'll work really well. Just don't use it here on Earth. It hasn't been studied yet, and I don't think it'll have the same effects. I guess that man in black wasn't so bad after all. On days 95 to 97, it was an exciting day. The skyscraper was finally complete. Now I really am king of the world. I knew that little tiny gorilla on the playground skyscraper would have been really proud of me, now that I had come a long way. Pun intended. Luno joined me at the top. He was used to the atmosphere and didn't need anything special to breathe. So, what do you think? Incredible it is. Strange to be back in space it is. I am scared to face the monster, but with you by my side, win. We will. I told Luno to go back down to Earth and that he didn't need to come to the moon with me this time. Instead, I would let him know when it was safe again. Luno listened to me and went back down. I built a small bridge to connect the tip of the skyscraper to the moon. The bridge reminded me of how it's important to stay connected by subscribing to the channel so we can always connect you to our exciting new adventures. On day 98, I took one small step for me, one great leap for the Lunarians. Houston, the King Kong has landed on the moon. It was so cool being on the moon. This gravity was crazy. It started to bounce around to take in my surroundings. I didn't see a single soul, but I did see a half-destroyed moon base. Something had definitely been here causing trouble. It was then that I remembered what the man in black gave me. I pulled out the strength potion and chugged it down. I could feel the power coursing through my veins. 
Islands. Whoa, this feels amazing. I started growing like crazy, becoming a mighty King Kong, just like the one the explorer had told me about. He was right. I did have it in me to become a great Kong. Zong Kong. Zong Zong? Either way, I was mighty. And check out my heart. Now that's what I'm talking about. All this commotion must have gotten the attention of the moon monster, though, because he came out of his hiding space next to the ruined base. Prepare to meet your match. The monster opened up its mouth and breathed lasers at me. Whoa, I didn't expect that. I then crashed into him, knocking him off balance. He continued to shoot lasers at me. Oof, those lasers are wicked hot. We rolled and brawled all over the moon. He had some really powerful attacks. They hurt and did some major damage to my health. I wouldn't have stood a chance if it wasn't for this mega strength potion I took. So I sucker punched him real hard. I opened my mouth to test out my supersized roar, but the sound waves didn't work right on the moon. Shoot, I was really hoping to use that ability. I would just have to make do with what I had. Heart counts for a lot, and I was doing this for the creatures I cared for. On day 99, the fight raged on, and I found myself losing. This beast was just too powerful, and I was sure he had advantages of being on his own turf. I was pushed towards my skyscraper. I had to make a decision. If I didn't retreat now, I could lose the battle altogether. I got onto the bridge and started destroying it as I ran across to the skyscraper. At least I'd have the last minute to regroup and heal myself before... Oh no, the beast took a running leap and jumped onto the skyscraper. I just let this heinous creature off the moon. Oh, this was bad. This was very bad. I couldn't allow him to climb down and start destroying Earth. And it was all my fault. I fought with all my might, and I was super weak now. Things are not looking good. I think this is the end. The monster got ready to deliver his final blow when suddenly he stopped. He was frozen. I looked around. To my great relief and surprise, I saw not just Luna, but a bunch of other little aliens that looked just like him. They were using their mind powers together, bravely and triumphantly. You saved me. Saved us, you did. Showed us bravery, you did. Helps us all we must. Now, finish him. They positioned the monster on the edge of the tower, and I used all my King Kong strength to knock him into next week. He fell from the skyscraper, down, down, down to his death. We had done it, together. On day 100, we were back at the jungle temple. I figured you guys might like this big telescope for my base. That way you can check in on your family super easily. I really misjudged you, man in black. You can call me Kim. Kim, I'm really glad we're friends now. Please feel free to visit anytime you like. It was time to say goodbye to my space friend. I didn't want to tell him, but I was super sad about him leaving. He felt like family to me, but he had his real family to get home to, and I would not get in the way of that. I guess this is goodbye. I'll never forget you. We all looked up at the moon together. I'll never forget you either, because returning home, I am not doing. I wish to stay here. I couldn't believe my ears. I was so happy to hear he wanted to stay. It was the perfect situation, and Bubblegum was really happy to hear that Luna was staying too, and waved at the Lunarians, waving back at us.